last Ooh. week's Emmy Awards. Godfrey gave an unscripted monologue in which he defended the recently arrested Pee Wee Herman. Among other things, Gilbert said, and I quote, Masturbation's against the law? I should have been sent to the electric chair years ago to think that by age 14 I was already Al Capone. Viewers on the East Coast saw the segment during the live broadcast, but the Fox Network edited the bit from its West Coast time-delayed broadcast. Spokesmen for both the network and the Emmy Awards apologized for Godfrey's appearance, calling it irresponsible and insulting. Gottfried, however, says his speech was the funniest part of the show and that he got a good response from the packed house. He says his words were no more offensive than those of Kirstie Alley, who won for Best Actress in a Comedy for Cheers. Alley thanked her husband, Parker Stevenson, for giving her the big one for the last eight years. Gottfried said he feels nothing but sadness for the Emmy officials. Despite the controversy, the awards broadcast was a success for Fox, who had the highest ratings for the show since it began airing the program five years ago. Fans of Star Trek's Mr. Spock will be able to see him on TV again soon. Leonard Nimoy is set to appear in two episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation as the now 130-year-old Vulcan. In the episodes, Spock gives a horrible speech at the Emmys and, no, he disappears <laughs> from his home planet and the new crew must begin a search for him. Nimoy helped conceive the storylines which will tie in with the latest big screen feature, Star Trek VI, opening in December. The show's producer says that even though Spock is about 130 years old, he'll still look a lot like Leonard Nimoy. Star Trek fans who can't wait until the movie is released can get their fix in a different way. Silver coins, the latest in a merchandising blitz to commemorate the TV show's 25th anniversary, are three coins of pure silver, featuring the likenesses of Spock, Captain Kirk, and the USS Enterprise. Each coin comes in a lovely midnight blue crushed velour case and sells for about $35. And finally, a feline character from Saturday Night Live is getting a TV special, Toonses, the cat who could drive a car will tape a half-hour special for NBC in the spring. Toonsis is the tabby whose owners encouraged him to do a little motoring with the automobile soon going off a cliff. Here's a look at Toonsis doing an urban cowboy takeoff with help from Dana Carvey and Deborah Winger. No. Not too much is known at this point about the special, but SNL's Lauren Michaels will oversee the production. Michaels is also overseeing the film adaptation of Wayne's World, which began shooting this month. Taken from a recurring skit on the show, Wayne's World, stars Mike Myers and Dana Carvey as teenage metalheads who host a TV show from their basement. Joining them for the film are Rob Lowe and Lara Flynn Boyle, with cameos by Ed O'Neill and Donna Dixon. And that's it for the update. And, Patty? Yeah. So many people are losing their sense of humor these days. You know, um, this, like, you know who the people who are losing their sense of humor the most are the animal rights activists? I mean, they're becoming rude, what they're doing to people. I mean, have you heard what they do? They come up and they spray people's mink coats and stuff. And this, two days ago, when I got here to Chicago, I was walking down Lakeshore Drive, and it's cold here, right? And this kind of pilgrim bunt cake woman, right, is like wearing like a really long, beautiful, like black llama mink coat, right? And she has like a little attitude, just like kind of like cruising on by. And, um... <laughs> I'm like, peep that coat out, homie. And, and this animal rights activist, right, like, comes up to her and grabs her and says, do you know how many animals had to die for that coat? And the woman said, you know how many animals I had to to get this coat? Why are you not smoking and eating well? We're all going to be dead within five years. Oh, yeah! Five years tops. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah, there's a big hole in the ozone. We broke the sky. Yeah, we Americans did it. We're pretty guilty about that. We read about it in the papers and go, geez, it's terrible what we've done to the ozone. But then when it's 95 degrees in New York City the day after Christmas, whoa, it's not that bad. <laughs> How to get out of the store and get a case of hairspray and spray it right up into the sky. <laughs> Screw the environment. I'm going golfing tomorrow. Because <laughs> everybody has that friend who's quitting everything. The health guy, you know that guy. I quit smoking, I quit drinking, I feel good. I get up in the morning with a nice big bowl of oat bran, I go to the bathroom for three and a half hours. <laughs> I have another bowl of oat bran, I go back in the bathroom for six more hours, all I do is eat and go to the bathroom, I'm gonna live forever. My colon is the strongest muscle in my body right now. I could pass Elvis through my colon right now. And all these cereals they have, crackling oat bran and horkin fiber chunks, you know? Cereal used to come with free prize, now it comes with a free roll of toilet paper in every box. <laughs> Guys get up on Sunday morning, forget about the newspaper, I'm gonna need the Bible, I got a big one. Brewing air. <laughs> I'm gonna be in here for a while. Coming up. John Stewart here on Short Attention Span Theater. Our uh, our next guest was having difficulty, honestly, getting work in America. 
and uh, he had to go to England to host a show called London Underground because they really didn't know him there. And uh, to be honest with you, I have to say this, uh, if it wasn't for his uncle, I don't even think he'd be in the business. Please welcome an untalented loser, Dennis Leary. <laughs> Dennis Leary, yeah, how, how are you? Which uncle is that? That was a payback. Which uncle is that? That's uh, That was Uncle Louie. Uncle Patrick. It's okay. What's happening, man? Good uh, to have you back in the... Yeah, it's great to be home. United States soil. It's great to be home. Smoking the American cigarettes again. Yes, I'm smoking American cigarettes, and I'm eating American meat, and I'm <laughs> drinking American beer, sitting around my house naked watching baseball. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be back in a country where people have, number one, teeth, number two, <laughs> air conditioning, and number three, good old-fashioned, fatty, chemical-induced, steroid-laden beef. You, you gotta know? have that. I can and feel, goiters, big yeah, American big goiters. goiters. and tumors and stuff, you know, just, and baseball, you know? You yeah. played baseball with me there. Yeah, I know, we played, we played softball over there. It was, it was actually, it was somewhat embarrassing, because you'd feel the ground ball, and they'd all come running over to you like and you were the babe or I something, know. you know? John, actually, John is a great uh, baseball player. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Play short stuff. Just a little thing I no, threw together. true. And John will back me up on this story, which, uh, which is just uh, astounding to me. I had a, uh, John was on base, actually. We were on the same team, and I had a line drive. Beautiful to, ball. Down the line. First, I hit a line drive down the line, left field, and it bounced on the foul line. Puff of white smoke. Puff of white lime smoke. Yes. Okay, so that's a fair ball. That's a fair ball. And, uh, in my book, in anybody's book. Right, and they have an umpire at this game, because mm -hmm. they, don't, they, know, they know the rules. That's about all they know. And the umpire says, foul ball, and I just did what any American guy would do. He reached into his chest and pulled out his heart. <laughs> and he began going on it. I shot him in the head seven <laughs> times. No, I, and you were still not thrown out of the game. That was the beautiful part about no, it. No, the thing was, I yelled at the guy. Yeah. What are you talking about, foul? That's all I said. What are you talking about, foul? No swear words or anything. And what did he do? He left. He, he turned around and walked away. And yeah. I said, what's going on here? And this other British guy walks up and goes, oh, you offended him. Yeah. And he left. That's he offended the umpire. He yelled, the he yelled at the umpire. It is typical of Typical of the British. He yelled at him. And they leave. We have some typical Dennis Leary humor, actually, from uh, from London Underground. Yeah, some stuff great we're doing show. About the ball. Yeah, that was a great show. A I had great a great show. time doing that. Let me tell you something. I liked it over there. Show Please. Attention span theater. All right. Tell me. Besides Patty, what is there? <laughs> Let's be honest, okay? That's it. I need a cigarette. Patty is not only carrying this is gonna take the weight a while. of her own child, soon to be born, but the weight of John Stewart. Okay? <laughs> she drags him around like an anvil attached to her ankle with her talent. She actually she has enough talent to carry the boat. Dennis, what am I do? So, um, we have, uh, we had show people on our show, we don't have, like, just comics. We have Sinead O'Connor, David Bowie, Cher. They weren't on the week I was there. I was hey. there with, like, Jimmy and the Rum Runners. I don't know what kind of band was there the week I was there. You had, like, Cher, In Excess, all these great bands. I get there, like, look, uh, John, Sheena Easton pulled out. We got, uh, Joey Vega and the Drum Boys. Here they are. Joey Cola and the Drum Joey Boys. Joey Cola and the Drum have. Boys. We anyway, have. let's, let's roll, let's, I want them to see this clip. This is okay. a funny clip. This is, uh... Dennis Leary uh, talking about the bald men from London Underground. Here's a clip. You know these bald guys who go bald and then refuse to admit that they're bald, right? And they get like toupees and plug jobs and stuff, and they think we don't notice, you know? <laughs> That's the part that kills me. They think nobody notices. You know what I'm going to do when I lose my hair when I go bald? You know what I'm going to wear on my head? A cat, okay? <laughs> a big, giant, fluffy cat right on the top of my head. We're walking to work in the morning, people go, Dennis, you look so much younger. <laughs> How do they take your humor over there? Because, I, I mean, it's... They I remember take you did the it and they Ross like it, show. okay? Remember? They take what I give them and they like it. They, they worship the it. ground. I'm huge over there, okay? I know. Jerry Lewis in France, forget about that. Me in England. I Mickey Rourke, that. Jerry Lewis can have France. I have England. I have Belgium. Do you have Wales? I have Wales. All right, that's good. I have a couple of Wales. You have the whole empire. Yeah. Do you have India? Or you gave that back, I gave actually. that back. Yeah, yeah that no, back. I remember. Who wants India? Yeah, you know, it's a big country. Let me tell you, he was on a talk show called Jonathan Ross Show. And he did his, his, his bits about Reagan and, and Nancy Reagan and Sinatra. No, and some other bits. You did on the John Ross. Six thirty p.m. The next night there was a talk show about Dennis Leary. It was old dowdy British women going. I don't think Dennis Leary is appropriate for British television. Going, the ball was foul. It, it bounced on the line. The ball was foul. The little Jewish kids okay. It's that big loud Irish guy we have to get rid of. Where's Patty Rossborough? That's what they said. She's got the That's talent. Right. All right. That's good. Right, Thanks for now? coming by. Yeah, you got to okay. go. But let's hang out okay. and. Uh, Dennis Leary from London Underground. It's on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Comedy Central. Right now, here's some sketch comedy from Monty Python. They're English.